Hi folks, welcome to another Wednesday widget from NYC CNC. Today we're going to do another video on soft jaws, but this one a little bit different. Um, as we grow more and more into production runs, one of the things that we've done is cut a lot of material up. We get, we're fortunate enough now where we get material delivered from Alro on a big truck and you buy 20 or 12 foot lengths of extrusions. And we go back and forth. Sometimes we cut it on the bandsaw. Sometimes we cut it on the DeWalt multi-tool or multi-saw. I, I love both of them, but I'll be honest, the DeWalt is phenomenal. It's so fast. Um, it's, there's a, it's a little bit more dangerous and noisy, but it's a great tool. But either one of those, they're not like a cold saw. They're not going to produce a finished edge or a square edge. And a lot of times we want that face squared up so that we can fixture it or put it in uh, the vise and so forth. So I had this idea because what we were doing is we were fidgeting with machinist levels in vices, trying to hold the part, hold the level, and then tighten the vise down. And that's, you know, results may vary and it's hard with, with only having two hands. So I had thought, wait a minute here, why don't we just take a set of jaws, put two dowel pins in them. We can take the dowel pins out when we don't need them, but otherwise we can leave these in as sort of our master set of jaws. And uh, when we have those two dowel pins in there, we can just push the stock up against those two pins. Ought to be pretty darn square. Tighten the vise down, and we've got a way of squaring up stock in the vise. Uh, it sounds crazy. Maybe I just haven't seen this for some odd reason, but it seems like this would be um, certainly nothing crazy unique and very handy in the shop. So let's use the bridge port to just simply drill spot, uh, spot drill in ream, a couple 251 holes, and then we'll use some 250 dowel pins and see how she works. So machine setup, what I'm gonna do, and I'm not a Bridgeport expert, but I wanna stack the deck in our favor, is I'm gonna actually have uh, us have to travel the quill down a little bit. What that is gonna let me do is then throw in the reamer after the drill, of course, and not have to move the bed up and down. There's no reason the, um, the X or Y should move when you move the knee, but I figure um, the better off we are if we keep it straight. Now, uh, ironically, the trade-off is that you could actually have some quill run out, but I think we'll be okay, and I think this will be plenty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a pretty arbitrary position. Honestly, this looks good to me. And then we're going to actually lock our X so that the table doesn't move at all left to right or in the X axis. And then what we'll do is we'll actually spot, drill, and ream in one hole and then move to the other position and spot, drill, ream in that position. And then even though we've got a DRO, we don't even have to worry about relocating over the same hole again. All right, turn her on. And just nice and easy. A little more. Okay. Off, break, throw in our letter B drill. Camera roll. And a little dab of, I call it coolant, even though it's really cutting fluid. That's okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill all the way through this because if we don't and you try to, if you have a good reamed hole and you try to push a dowel pin in, you're going to find that the air pocket is actually going to want to push that pin out. Um, you could create just a little bleed hole, but I'm okay going all the way through. Okay, all the way through, off, break, and then let's switch into our reamer. A little bit of cutting fluid. Now we turn it on, then we're gonna slow it down. On these variable speeds heads, you don't want to, uh, you can't turn, change the speed while, while it's off. That's a big no-no. And one shot right through. There we go. Chips out of there. See how she fits, beautiful. Look at that, look at that folks. It's a through hole. You can, you can lift it up and out all day long, but let go, it'll stop itself just on the air pressure. Pretty cool, right? Okay, now what we're gonna just do is, uh, we'll actually throw our spot drill back in just to use as a guide. Again, the X is locked, so we're not gonna move that, and we're gonna come
you know, obviously the more distance you got, the easier it'll be to, to make sure it's square. That looks good to me. Now I'll go ahead and actually lock the Y. Um, that way we don't move in between the spot drill ream. And let's go. Letter B drill, a little bit of fluid. Sort of manually pecking it. A little bit more. It's fun to drill uh, with a manual machine because you get a feel for the, the tool. And the question is, are these jaws going to live on the bridge port, which Jared uses a lot to uh, rough raw material, or the Tormach, or heck, maybe we'll make another set for both. Okay, there we're through. Throw in our reamer and we'll be done. We'll give them a test drive. Get some chips out of here. Plenty of cutting fluid there. Turn her on. Slow it down. I said one shot last time, but I didn't really mean it. What we're going to do is a couple shots, and I'm actually going to blow the chips off just to make sure we're not uh, increasing our reamed hole unnecessarily by recutting chips. I can actually already feel, to be honest with you, that's going to be a nicer, even nicer reamed hole. See what she feels like. Look at that. Beautiful. Up and down, no friction at all, but drop it, self stops again from the air pressure. Love it. I came in the other day and uh, God bless him, Jared had made this little tool for this deburring tool. He got sick of, uh, of doing it the wrong way, so I give him credit for that. Um, the only thing I don't like is this is a sort of a high rake tool, so you do have to be careful because it'll bite in, but we'll just take a quick deburr on both of these to break the edge, like so. Perfect, let's uh, let's head over to the Tormach, throw these in and see how they work. To use our trusty DeWalt 18 volt impact driver. Throw on our 3 8 ball end. Pull our old jaw off, let's wipe it down. So, throw our jaw in there, actually I wanted to do it that way. These are reversible, which I like. And back in we go. Let's throw our dowel pins in. Like so. And we'll close up the vise. Take just a regular piece of aluminum right off the bandsaw. Hold it up against the two dowel pins. Let's take a cut and see how she works. All right, here we go, just roughing off the face. It's that rough corn cob rougher, but it does a phenomenal job with the surface finish on the bottom. I left a little line in the center. Sorry, I'm sitting here by the camera. All right, let's take a look and see if she's square. So, we machined off that face, so in theory this, these two should be squared to each other. Take a look, boom. How about that, folks? That should be a huge help. 
So folks, I think that's a huge win. That's gonna be a lot easier than holding the, the damn level flat on the bottom of the vise and trying to hold the part in while you tighten the vise handle. You can see I was actually, well, we shouldn't even say I was surprised because honestly that should have come out square if we did it correctly and it does, which is great. Um, I think those are gonna be the new jaws for that vise though. And the other thing I was thinking is I may actually machine or actually probably even better grind a little flat like a 50 thou flat and that may serve as a built-in parallel for holding thin parts. We'll see if how much hold down power it's really got. Um, but fun little project. I know Jared will really appreciate that because again, once you get that one edge square, then you can set your Z0, have this on the bottom of the vise and be machining the top to a precision and square dimension and length. And that's a real win as we prep uh, stock. Here's the funny thing. I used to run a, a business where we were machining a ton of small parts like this. And we found out we could actually buy machined blanks cheaper than we could buy the material and then cut it and size it. Isn't that crazy? Um, so if you're running thousands of parts, you ought, you ought to actually look into buying sort of machine ready blanks and parts and so forth. But for us, for now, this is going to be a real win. So as always, folks, hope you enjoyed today's Wednesday widget. I appreciate the enthusiasm, the comments, the thumbs up, the likes, the shares. Take care.